partner primary source. Disengagement. Just like the shelf IPSS, disengagement of the dirty little secret is rare, but if it does happen, you will be blocked and therefore your messages will not be replied to. You've been painted black and in effect, we cause you to disappear. We deny your existence. We want nothing more to do with you and therefore disengagement has occurred and you realize this because you are blocked and in effect, you receive a silent treatment by reason of disengagement and blocking. The non-intimate secondary source. This includes inner and outer circle friends, colleagues and family members. The initial seduction. There is no initial seduction of family members naturally, but with regard to friends and colleagues, this happens quickly as it doesn't take too much effort to bind this person to us as friend or colleague. And the reality is that there is unlikely to ever be an occasion or indeed time for failure to respond to the text messages occurring. The reason for this is that the flow of text messages between a non-intimate secondary source and the narcissist is not as great. And therefore, a delay of a few hours in replying would not be unusual and would not threaten control over this non-intimate secondary source. When the non-intimate secondary source has in effect been seduced and embedded as that non-intimate secondary source, they continue to enjoy a near permanent golden period because their prime aim, the prime aims that they provide are only utilized intermittently. Fuel remains fresh. The non-intimate secondary source is also often very loyal and therefore receives in effect bribing benefits and rewards from our kind. So this seduction golden period lasts for a long time. If in this period there is a failure to reply to a text message, it is because we are genuinely busy about something else. The non-intimate secondary source, whilst important to us, is expendable and therefore the messages of a non-intimate secondary source are not treated as an absolute priority. The fuel, whilst obtained is good, is not the highest potency and generally in tandem with our concept of superiority and control, consider that the non-intimate secondary source once bound to us is not going to become disloyal because we've been slow to respond to text messages. Our sense of entitlement reaffirms this and we do not perceive that a non-intimate secondary source will challenge our control if we don't respond for a number of hours. We form the view that the non-intimate secondary source will conclude that we are just busy and therefore they will patiently wait for a reply. We've no need to rush and of course no need to devalue them during this stage of the dynamic. Accordingly, if you are a non-intimate secondary source and your messages are not being responded to for a number of hours, it is because we are busy doing something else and you are not a priority. Devaluation. Similar to the IPSS and the Dirty Little Secret, non-intimate secondary sources also receive corrective devaluations. And either the narcissist will assert control directly through a hoovering message, or there will be a protracted failure to reply to your text messages. Therefore, if you don't hear from the narcissist for, say, more than half a day, then it is likely that you've received a corrective devaluation. Eventually, we do respond, and it will either be having set the reset button and we will carry on as if we hadn't responded. Uh, we will carry on as if we had not ignored you and we don't notice that that has happened. Or we may respond in a method of giving you a scathing put-down with no words of comfort, no excuses offered, but an unpleasant de reply designed to draw fuel from you dealing with your earlier threat to our control. Disengagement. The disengagement of a non-intimate secondary source is also rare, but if it does happen, then you are struck from the record, you're made persona non grata, and you'll be blocked. We freeze you out, and no doubt have already replaced you with somebody else from the stable. Your messages seeking explanations and reconciliation will be unheeded, and indeed in many instances, not even read, such as your inferior status from our perception. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. Silent Treatment Ignoring Text Messages Part 2 
This video concerns where the narcissist ignores text messages from secondary sources. The intimate partner, secondary source. This is the individual who is treated to the shelf dynamic. There is a hoover trigger. We take you off the shelf. We interact with you in some way. Maybe spend time with you, have sex with you, take you out for dinner, have a telephone conversation with you or a flurry of text messages and then you go back on the shelf. Until the next time there is a hoover trigger and we hoover you off the shelf again. This person is either somebody who is being seduced by our kind for the purposes of being promoted to become the new primary source at the appropriate time or is somebody who has not yet or never will secure that promotion but is certainly someone we regard as too valuable to leave alone and therefore the intimate partner secondary source of a shelf variety might be someone who is on the up in terms of seduction as we look to ensure that they will be a reliable and high functioning primary source or it might be someone who has not yet made the cut or never will but since we have invested time and effort in them and they do cater to the prime aims to some extent they naturally remain of use of us and of course they belong to us from our perspective accordingly what does it then mean if we are not responding to your text messages when you are the intimate partner secondary source during the initial seduction it is the ipss who experiences the most intense of seductions you will likely have begun as a tertiary source, a stranger who was targeted, consciously or unconsciously, for your potential. You are therefore very quickly promoted to a secondary source, and since sex is such a weapon of mass seduction, you will have been further promoted to the position of IPSS. As we look to promote you to the primary source, subject to you coming under control and continuing to cater to the prime aims to a very effective level, you then experience the love bombing and the manifestation of our infatuation, through often near ceaseless text messaging. This is being done to control you, to make you feel special, to condition you. When there is a hiatus in the text messaging, this is not a devaluation and is either part of you just being placed naturally on the shelf or it is a small test to ascertain how you respond. Accordingly, if there is, if you send us a text message and we don't respond, and this is occurring during the initial seduction of you, you're being tested, or we genuinely are unable to respond. Otherwise, we would do. The narcissist needs to ascertain the nature of your reaction to this failure of us to respond where it is a, a consciously or unconsciously deliberate one. For instance, if you are relaxed about this change, so you've grown used to a text always at 8 a.m. and then we don't send one, but you don't respond to this failure in any way, then this does threaten our control and will disappoint us. If, however, we do not issue a text at 8 a.m., and you text us at 8.01 a.m. asking us how we are, your attempt to find out why we have not texted without asking as such, and then we don't reply, and then you text again, then we will be pleased with your response, because it is indicating that you are considerably under control. Where there is a delay during seduction, it is either that we are genuinely unable to respond, and often... We will have forewarned you about that, as I've explained in the video, prior warning silent treatment. Or it is because we are doing this to test you for the purposes of ascertaining the extent to which you are under control. We are finding out how quickly you respond and what you will send in response. This is not devaluing behavior. The failure to reply to your text message will only be for a short period of time, a few hours at most. As it is a test and we don't want to risk threatening our control over you to too great a degree accordingly if we do not reply to you 
and then you don't follow up, then we will eventually contact you. You see, if it was devaluing, the silence would continue far longer. Therefore, if you've sent us a text message and we don't reply, and you follow up on that, we will leave it be for a few hours, again, and then we will reply, seeing how many times you contact us in that period of time to both provide us with fuel and demonstrate how under control you are. Eventually, we will respond and reply to you after a handful of your messages in a short time period because we don't want to risk losing your interest and we are, of course, consciously or unconsciously satisfied that you are responding in the way that we approve of. During the golden period, when you are more embedded as a secondary source, we have drawn you in and the shelf dynamic is progressing in its usual way. If the targeting and initial seduction proves successful and you've been promoted from IPSS to the primary source, then you need to listen to silent treatment, ignoring text messages part one, as that deals with the situation where we ignore text messages from the intimate partner primary source. If, however, you have not been promoted to primary source, but there has been no disengagement, then we have opted to keep you connected to us as a shelf intimate partner secondary source. You will, in effect, be aware that you've not been promoted in many instances because there will be mention made of the wife or girlfriend or you see that they're still on the scene. Or, if we didn't mention one, then you don't see as often as you once did during that initial seduction that was occurring. It's often the case that people think that you're now being devalued. Actually, you're not. You are still in the golden period, but the relevant one for the IPSS, where you're embedded as that IPSS. This means that we still, in effect, regard you as good. We still see you painted white. We want your fuel, and you are responding appropriately by demonstrating that you are under control. But unlike an, in, unlike an intimate partner primary source, we are not availing you of your prime, the prime aims from you as often. This means that the fuel that you provide as this shelf IPSS does not go stale, and intermittently we return to you. We, in effect, by shelfing you in this way, keep you hanging on, future faking you as to what might happen, and at that juncture we have no intention of promoting you, although those circumstances may change further down the line. What will be happening now is that during this period where we have a primary source and you are the IPSS of a shelf variety, we will continue with the devaluation of that primary source. We will continue to engage with you as a shelf IPSS. And we may also be engaging with another IPS in an additional initial seduction period for them. Accordingly, when you are during the golden period and embedded, your, and your messages are not being responded to, all it is is because you are on the shelf. You are not being devalued, and we are engaging with the primary source or somebody else. You remain of use to us, but this is intermittent. It is difficult because the silences, and they can be protracted, cause you to think that this is a silent treatment, but it isn't. We've placed you on the shelf and we are busy elsewhere. What will often happen is that you will send us a text message and you receive some replies, but they are short and perfunctory in nature. For instance, busy, we'll call later. Can't talk, meeting. Busy, but miss you. Tied up, but we'll message later. These are crumbs of comfort, provided because we don't want to lose you we regard you as under control, and if you send a text message asking, when can I see you, you will get a reply. But it is one basically like a pat on the head, saying, be a good intimate partner, secondary source, just sit there please on the shelf, I have no need of you. I'm not taking you off the shelf, but I don't want you to start causing me any problems, so I'm going to throw you this comfort crumb to keep you sweet. 
that in his effect is what is going on. And the lesser and the mid-range narcissist does that instinctively and unconsciously, the greater and the ultra know that that's what we're doing, that we're giving you a little tidbit to keep you sweet, to keep you on side, but we are not going to take you off the shelf. When we issue a comfort crumb to you in that manner, you are not being taken off the shelf, you are staying on the shelf, but being told, look, I don't have a problem with you, but I don't want to play with you right now. Be a good IPSS and just sit there until I'm ready to hoover you off the shelf. So accordingly, when you are in this position of being on the shelf and you are in effect still in the embedded golden period with the narcissist, you will get a reply from us. There might be a slight delay because we're busy about something else and you'll gain a comfort crumb. Understand this is not devaluation. You're just being told, sit there, wait, I'll deal with you when I choose. Devaluation. Devaluation of an IPSS is comparatively rare. What we issue against you are corrective devaluations, not a sustained devaluation as is given to the intimate partner primary source. We've invested time in you and invariably you tend to function pretty well because whenever we do take you off the shelf, you're delighted to gain some time with us at last. Your fuel is never stale and thus remains fresh and therefore there is no need to devalue. There will be instances, however, that a corrective devaluation needs to be issued against you, which is akin to a slap across the wrist. And this is where, essentially, you are threatening our control. And we determine that a benign response is not appropriate, and rather a malign one is. So, for instance, you might send us a text message saying, when can I next see you? I really miss you. And we throw a comfort crumb, which is a benign response. It might not feel like it to you, but from our perspective it is. If you accept that and stay quiet, there's no problem, you remain on the shelf. But what if you respond by saying, well, hurry up, I really won't need to talk to you. Or, I'm sick of waiting around, this isn't fair. You are now threatening the narcissist's control, and the comfort crumb has evidently not worked. And therefore, in such circumstances, because you are challenging our control, we have to do something about it. Now, in some instances, you will receive a text response from the narcissist, whereby the narcissist is selected, either consciously or unconsciously, to assert control over you by, in effect, hoovering you. And it will be, look, I've told you that I'm really busy at the moment. I don't appreciate you placing these demands on me. I'm under a lot of pressure. Look, I told you I would contact you later. I will do so. Please stop texting me in the time being. It can get worse. Will you stop texting me? You're being too needy. This, you always do this. You put too many demands on me. I'm not putting up with this. Stop texting me. And it can go into the realms of being abusive. That is a corrective devaluation. However, it is often the case that the narcissist, where you are threatening the narcissist's control, where you are an intimate partner secondary source, opts, either consciously or unconsciously, to assert control through the third assertion of control and thus ignoring you. You send a message, the narcissist sees the message's message but does not reply. You send another and not reply. When that occurs, you're being devalued, where you're sending repeated messages but you're not getting any response. Or you send repeated messages, you can see that we're reading them but they're not responding. You're getting corrective devaluations and the narcissist is asserting control over you by applying the third assertion of control. So, where you're the IPSS and you're on the shelf, if you send us a text message and we reply, and there's a back and forth, then naturally we're not ignoring your messages. Sometimes you'll get the comfort crumb, which is a benign response which basically says, sit quietly on the shelf, I'll deal with you when I'm ready. And if you obey that, there isn't a problem. If, however, you keep texting the narcissist to get a response, to organise to see one another, to try and basically to come off the shelf, then you're threatening our control. And either the narcissist will respond by the first assertion of control with the direct hoover, which will invariably be 
malign and increasing in nastiness the more that you do it and then eventually you will be ignored or you'll be ignored from the beginning in the instance where you keep sending the text messages to the narcissist demanding that we spend time with you and the narcissist responds by saying i'm busy at the moment i've told you i can't see you at the moment the wife's suspicious etc if you keep coming back you keep threatening the narcissist's control and therefore this first assertion of control isn't working therefore the narcissist is forced to switch to a different one and you will in effect force the narcissist to then ignore you and then you get no further replies to your text messages in other instances the narcissist goes straight to the third assertion of control and just doesn't reply to you. In either instance, those are corrective devaluations. You're threatening the narcissist's control, the narcissist is asserting control over you by ignoring you, it is a malign response, and you're being given a silent treatment. What about disengagement? It's extremely rare to actually be disengaged from as an IPSS. You're immediately painted black and it's as if you don't exist. We do not regard you as even worth bothering with, and our disengagement of you, of course, is an assertion of control. If you keep sending text messages, they will not be responded to, and it is highly likely that you have been blocked, because that confirms that you have been disengaged from. The Dirty Secret, Intimate Partner, secondary source. The dirty little secret is the person who is kept hidden away but is dipped into for excellent fuel with considerable regularity. Do listen to the video, The Dirty Little Secret. The additional seduction period. This will be intense in a similar way to that described above as concerning the IPSS. There is unlikely to be any delay in replying to text messages however with the DLS because there's no need to test you. Your role has been allocated as a dirty little secret, and at that juncture, you'll never become the primary source. Of course, that might change later on, whilst you've been embedded. At this early stage, your function is to be available to set time or times each week for those secret trysts when the clandestine nature of the connection increases the amount of fuel that is provided, since you're likely to be the other woman or the other man. We will then move to embedding you, and therefore, when you are in this initial seduction period with the narcissist as a dirty little secret, we will respond to your messages because we do not want to A, risk losing you, and B, you trying to contact other people that you might happen to know mutually, thus risk exposing that you are our dirty little secret. Accordingly, there will be no failure to reply. If there is a failure to reply, this is purely because we are not actually able to reply, and it is genuine. We are swimming and away from our phone for example what about the seduction golden period with the dirty little secret well where you have now been drawn in and you are in in that embedded position then you are slotted into a long-standing golden period like the intimate partner's secondary source of a shelf variety because you're used intermittently whilst you're kept secret you will be seen more often than a shelf ipss that IPSS has failed to become the primary source, but is kept and strung along for potential promotion at a later juncture and, of course, intermittent usage. At this stage, you are never going to be the primary source, and you are seen more often because of the nature of your fuel is this two-hour fuel injection before we disappear back to the primary source. Invariably, when you're the dirty little secret, you'll be aware that the narcissist has a primary source. And therefore, you'll have been warned that you can't text me, you have to wait to hear from me first. And you will comply with that. This means that you are thus less likely to badger us with text messages. We will get in contact with you first to hoover you. If you do message us, during your golden period as the dirty little secret, there is no intentional, either consciously or unconsciously, failure to respond to the messages, and often the reply will explain why we can't speak, or we will message at length, but the content of the messages will be complimentary, encouraging, and utilize future faking, whilst, of course, triangulating you by smearing the primary source. 
This, in effect, amounts to improved comfort crumbs. Indeed, there'll often be an explanation given to you and then explain where we're next available, whereas the shelf IPSS is not afforded this. You will hear things such as, can't message for long, got to take the witch to her friends, so we'll message you around 8 o'clock, can't wait to kiss you again. Or, difficult to text, she's still here. We'll message again as soon as I can, really missing you, and want to show you just how much as soon as possible. Or, hi sex machine, stuck at present, we'll message after 6pm, kiss, 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 kiss. Thus, if you find that your answers are always answered, even if it's only the messages that I've just described, and your expectations are being managed, and you know that there's a primary source involved, then you're the dirty little secret, and you are embedded in your golden period, and the narcissist is unlikely to ignore your text messages. Devaluation. It is unusual for a dirty little secret to be devalued because the dirty little secret tends to be highly compliant, accepting of their role, and the delicious turbo boost of fuel provided is most welcome. It's highly unlikely that we become bored of the dirty little secret's fuel, and devaluation only ever really occurs where the dirty little secret doesn't respond to our overtures, or, so for example, we want to meet and you say that you can't, or that you start asking for more, in effect, wanting to be more than a dirty little secret, wanting to be drawn into our world more, in effect, moving on to the status of being a shelf IPSS, or even primary source. If there are demands made for more time, or threats to expose the arrangement, or the fuel is diminished, then initially the narcissist is likely to respond and pour sugar on you with benign hoovers to calm the situation. However, if this won't work, then you may receive malign hoovers. In some instances, the narcissist will then issue a silent treatment and not respond. It is highly unusual that the narcissist with a dirty little secret will proceed to ignoring your messages straight away. The reason for this is there's a greater danger of you damaging the situation with the primary source and therefore the narcissist will want to keep your threat to control under, under control by a benign response and thus you will get a response. Where the narcissist doesn't reply to you, where you are making demands, where you are wanting more time with the narcissist, then that is devaluing and the narcissist is asserting control over you through the third assertion of control. It is unusual for that to happen, but when it does, the reason that the narcissist is not responding to you is he is controlling you and it's most likely that he's engaged with somebody else, usually the primary source. It's highly likely that the primary source is being given a respite period and therefore, rather than risk being seen tinkering on the phone, the narcissist just hides the phone in a pocket, in a drawer, and your text messages are being ignored because the narcissist isn't even seeing them because they don't want anything to do with you at this juncture. You have to stay in the compartment of being a dirty little secret whilst the narcissist enjoys the respite period with the intimate partner 